Hey everybody, welcome to My Green Pets. I'm William Green. Today's background sounds are from George Vlad's YouTube channel and these are from the Borneo rainforest. You can hear the gibbons in the background hooting, little hooters. And we're going to look today just at how things are coming along. So I took some divisions a couple, a few weeks ago and wanted to show you how those are coming. So let's look. This is Jesse Lee. There were two divisions that came off Jesse Lee, and look at how nicely they're rooting. Pleased about that. Trying to keep them very still, not move them at all, because I don't want those roots to be disturbed. Um, I'm actually starting to see some roots on these guys as well. These are Vanda Falcata. And if you can look down right there at the base of this one, there is a little root poking out, and a couple of them have roots. Very happy about that. I took some bulbophyllum divisions as well down here and as you can see they are growing nicely and they've got new growth coming up and the bulbs are a little bit wrinkled but not too bad so that should be nice they look like they're going to be ready to go for the auction in early spring May or June is the target date the Callias are in full growth mode, some of them really uh, growing quickly. This one back here, look at this. That new growth started back in early January, around the new year. And it is. it looks like it's going to be a pretty big one. Almost all of them have growths on them at varying stages. It's kind of cool to see how they go from just a little nubbin on the side of the plant like this and then they slowly kind of grow into larger and larger structures. It's a pretty interesting process. Lots of roots as well especially on this guy. Look at this. Jose Marti is a classic Calia hybrid between Bobels and Bob Betts and it is just covered in roots everywhere. In fact, today is usually, I usually apply a rooting hormone every two weeks. Today I'm not doing it. There's too many roots. There's literally too many roots going on. Like they're just branching out everywhere. Check out these over here. Oops. See these? I mean, yeah, it's great, but. I don't think they need any more root hormone for net for right now. Roots are looking good. Lots of roots coming off of this guy. This triony actually is species, but it has been a very, very good grower for me and it's putting out lots of roots as well. Just crazy to think that this species could be such an aggressive grower, but it's nice. Nice to see. This Cattleya was submerged in hydrogen peroxide, 3% solution, um, last weekend. I think it was last Thursday, maybe last Friday. And I'm pleased to say that I don't see any ill effects that I can tell. It has new roots poking out of the old roots there, so that's a good sign. Here's a root poking out the side of the pot here and then there's a couple new roots down there as well poking out of an old root old root so that's great it has a new growth on it and actually this was one of the first plants to bloom and I thought I thought surely it was too small but it just turns out it's not a very big plant but when it bloomed it had three flowers on its first bloom so I'm really really hoping that this growth is going to bloom for us this year, and then we're going to have more than three flowers on it. Calia Rex is known for having several flowers per spike, up to ten flowers on one spike. So I'm hoping that the changing conditions, which means less fertilizer during the winter, like no fertilizer during the winter, um, and then just more moderate fertilizer during the growing season, uh, hoping that that's going to cause uh, more flowers. I've read uh, Chadwick's book describes uh, that fertilizing cattleyas during the 
uh, rest season can actually have negative impacts on flower counts. So we're going to see if that's that's the case here today. The seedlings are doing pretty well. I I think I I mounted these uh, Calyrex seedlings on these antlers because I thought that they would like to grow on bone because bone is calcium and plants like calcium but um, what I'm seeing is that the roots on this plant are not attaching at all to the antler. They're just kind of like, they're trying, they're kind of growing up against it, but they're not attaching to it. So I'm wondering if this is just too smooth for them to grab a hold of. They are still rooting nicely. You can see this little guy. He's got a new root poking out here, and then there's a, another root growing down there into this other plant. Now this one I don't think has any good roots on it. That one may not survive. This guy up here, doing really well. The coloration of the leaves makes me think that maybe it's getting too much light. I mean, it it should be somewhat green. It's very, very, very purple colored, but um, they're still, they're firm and they might be okay. Phalaenopsis chilleriana has got a cakey on the side there and the old growth as well I'm not sure I'm, I'm feeling more optimistic that this plant is going to survive but not yet not yet I'm still kind of cautious uh, Dendrobium country girl bloomed for us around the winter solstice and it's got some new spikes on it which are going to be nice these dendrobiums though they are absolute mite magnets i found a bunch of mites all over the buds this morning i doused the whole plant in a neem oil solution and i feel like that's something i'm just going to have to do regularly for the as long as i have this plant because mites it, it just it loves mites love the new green juicy growths on these guys i don't really have mites on anything else um, just on these dendrobiums. Oh, and the catacetums. Let's have a look at the catacetums here. So I divided these up and these will be up for auction as well. This is Seek Notice Wine Delight. It's the furthest along and it has really got lots of roots pushing out. It's a good sign. That's going to get established super quickly. And this sphagnum is new and it's completely dry and it, it will not be watered at all until, well, late April at the very earliest. I really want to see those roots poking out the bottom of the pot before I think about watering. Right next to it is Desert Davison Osiris. This was awarded in January and it's got a new growth pushing up out of the sphagnum down there too. So that's great. Um, the other divisions are back bulbs, and I'm curious to see when these back bulbs are going to start putting out new growths and where those new growths are going to come out of. This basket back here is two unusual bulbophyllums. On the right side, this little guy is Bulbophyllum catenulatum, and it has a little spike down there. I know it's kind of hard to see that. Spikes are about as thin as hairs. It's got a little spike down there coming up. And uh, I moved some stuff around in there this morning, so hopefully it doesn't mess it up too much. And then the rest of it, the larger bulbo, is Bulbophyllum crocium. And crocium seems to be putting out some new growth. So that is exciting. Seeing some little bumps on the sides of the, new, the newest pseudobulbs. And hopefully that is going to, yeah, there's one. Yeah, the new, new growth there. Hopefully that thing's going to put out some new growth, get established, get its roots down into that medium, and, and be nice and bloom for us next winter with its beautiful little sun rays of, rays of sunshine for flowers. The cattail orchids, Dionia ophritis, down here are really coming up nicely now. Those uh, The leaves come out first and then there will be roots soon to follow. Those are really pretty. Next to that is the Phalaenopsaurus. This is just a 
grocery store phalaenopsis the co-worker gave me last year it's very large and it does have a nice spike there um, unfortunately the flowers are facing away from us but once they all bloom out I'm gonna take it I'm gonna attempt to get it out of the tent and put it out on a table where it's nice and can enjoy it and then here are my three little paths just kind of doing their thing uh, the villosum has a new growth a new leaf coming out the top that's good um, this one, the Michael Kopowitz, is rotting again, but like I said last week, I'm not going to do anything about it. I mean, at this point, I just don't care. Whatever, dude. And this, this is my Colossum, and Colossum seems to be okay, but it, I wish that it, I don't know, it's kind of got some yellowing lower leaves there, and I'm not sure. It doesn't look bad but it doesn't look great either it tried to grow a new growth there and then it that new growth died so it's not what I want to see <clears throat> all right here's my uh, band of Falcata, the one I'm gonna keep the one I took divisions off of and you can see it's got a nice big beautiful juicy root coming off there a couple of them actually always happy to see that Little Calia seedlings seem to be doing okay. Love seeing them put out new roots. It seems that when those new roots hit the sphagnum, though, they don't. They just kind of stop. I don't know. I don't think. Something about sphagnum they don't really get into. They almost do better when just they're just growing against the clay pot, or if they're just out in the air. I'm getting their roots growing, but they don't look really like they thrive in that sphagnum, you know? There are new, new growths coming off there, that's good. But I think uh, an airier mix like bark or if, any, if I could find these granite rocks but in smaller pieces, like little little chips of granite. I think the seedlings in granite in tiny pots might be a good a good situation for them. Okay. Oh, and let's not forget Hal. Our good friend Hal's got another flower open here. Took Hal out of the tent today and gave him a good rinse in the sink. Just really flushed out his pot. And um, haven't seen any new growth on Hal for a, a year or so. So I'd like to see... I'd like to see you put out some new pseudobulbs, Hal. If you're feeling it, man. Okay. Um, well, the seed pod that came off of here has dried off completely, and I've collected the seed, I've put it in an envelope, and on Monday, when it's going to be a little bit warmer outside, I'm going to take it and send it to the lab so we can get some more Calyrex going. Hopefully we'll see. The seed may not be viable at all because it was only on there for six months as opposed to a year last time. So we will see. But this other seed pod is getting to where it's about to fall off. It's cracked open and it's spilling some seed out as well. So it's going to be nice to see if those are viable. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me on My Green Pets. Just this week's update. And hope everything is growing well for you. Take care, and we'll see you next time right here on My Green Pets. Bye-bye.